This is a sign of the times, isn't it? The other day I attended a conference for optimists and the place was half empty. But anyway, I didn't want to talk about that. What I want to talk about is the way we are obsessed, some of us are, with the unknown, with death, with dying, and all the things that scare us about lives, about life, to the point where some of us think it is reasonable to dismiss life as unworthy of living and to look at life as something that should never have existed in the first place. We are so obsessed with pain and suffering that we ignore the positive sides of our lives and then, as a result of ignoring the positive sides of our lives, we start declaring life to be unworthy and we start embracing craziness such as antinatalism. And of course, in the heat of the argument, hyperbole often tends to take over. And with a subject such as this, that's even more likely to happen. And of course, in a case of arguments about quality of life, the meaning of life, whether life is worth living or not, arguments that are often brought into the fray are arguments about, for example, terminally ill patients. We are looking at the suffering of the worst cases, declaring that these people have nothing to look forward to but maybe another few months of suffering, and then death, with no respite, possible respite. And because that is such a terrible prospect, we are so afraid that this might happen to us, that we start questioning whether it, we should have been born in the first place. And we talk about such silliness as subjecting people to the risk of having to deal with such terrible pain and suffering. And don't get me wrong. Such pain and suffering is, of course, terrible. But is it experienced in a similar vein as is being described by these doomsayers, by these morbidly misery-focused people such as antinatalists? Is that what the life of a terminally ill cancer sufferer, for example, is really about? And it turns out that, in fact, it is not. Now, don't get me wrong. It is obviously one of the most horrendously shocking experiences in anybody's life to be told that one is suffering from a terminal disease and then to know that what lies ahead is a more or less rapid decline, deterioration, suffering, pain, and if eventually death. But still, as some studies show, and I will link to them in the video description, cancer sufferers, terminally ill cancer sufferers, are not uniformly gloom, obsessed, and depressed about their condition. Now, obviously, it is depressing. But on the other hand, they still manage to find a certain sense of purpose in their life, meaning in their life. They make a lot of the what is still ahead of them, and they use their time wisely. There are also therapeutic ways of dealing with the situation and helping these people cope with the inevitable and with their situation by therapy, by life review therapy, by other therapy, and so on and so forth. And that has been shown to have a very positive effect on these people's appreciation of their own existence. In other words, even those people in that situation often do not feel 
like, first of all, their life hadn't been worth living, and that their life lacked meaning and purpose. Given that even people in such dire circumstances can find a way, often, not always of course, but often, to appreciate the value in their life, the meaning in their life, the purpose in their life, and of course, accepting the responsibility that we all have to create such purpose, to create such meaning in our own lives for ourselves, that just shows how ridiculous the whole antinatalist and ethelist worldview really is. When even terminal cancer sufferers will not agree with your points of view, then surely perhaps you're barking up the wrong tree.